Joey with the box. Who's in the box? Oh, what's in the box? All right. How's everybody doing? Sorry for the setup delay. Uh, this is a little bit bigger than uh, I remember. And uh, kind of tough, actually, to get into the shot. Um, it doesn't even all quite fit on my screen. So, yeah. All right. So, welcome to Bob's Basement Toy Vlog. Um, bring you up to speed. We are at box... Well, we're at episode 13, Lucky 13, and we've gone through several boxes. I wouldn't say we've gone through 13 boxes, because some days we've had smaller boxes. I put them together. Stuff's already... It's still on the card. It's still on the package, so I figure it's quicker to bring it out and show it to you. I don't have to unbag anything or sort through pieces. Um, I'm doing this to uh, use my time right now that I have, go through my basement, find what I have that's worth something, what I forgot I had... Um, and also start to sort through this, like Star Wars this way, Star Trek that way, horror figures over there. Um, it's been an interesting process. It's been a little tough sometimes to find uh, some of these things. I do have a loose box of items, uh, things that didn't quite fit in with what the box said it was. Like here's all Jason's weapons, um, buttons, you know, pieces to things, um, you know, these things. I know that I have the other counterpart somewhere. Um, and then I have little bags, put everything in. When it gets to it, sort them out. Various sizes, depending on things. But today, we are handling what I call one of the coffins. This is a plastic tub, a uh, Rubbermaid tub. It is actually 50 gallons of water could sit in this. Um, obviously not anymore because you can see that it's been cracked. It's the duct tape. I call these the plastic coffins. Uh, I've got one, two, three, three that I can see. Yeah, at least three up oh, four, five, and there's probably two more beneath it. So I've got seven or eight of these bad boys. These are enormous. You could sled down the hill in these. These are the kind that, uh, Walter White wanted to use at the beginning of Breaking Bad. Um, that's how big these tubs are. So uh, let's get into it because there's probably a lot of things in here. Now, I would say some of these tubs probably date 2009 down. So we have probably have some interesting items in here. We'll also see how good I pack some of this stuff. Here we go, 2009-ish. Now, hold this up like this. You can see this a little bit better. And there's one thing in here I was very excited already, excited to see. Um, but let's do some of the looser things in here. So here is uh, the Locutus action figure from Playmates, Star Trek. Um, the punch is still here, but I did have him hanging by a, a thumbtack at one point. So there was a little bit of a hole, but the, the punch card, it's still there. So this is Locutus figure from 1993. Didn't expect to see him. But here is the Star Trek Generations figure notice that we have the hook now for the peg instead of a piece of cardboard you don't really see these ever um i don't even know if they make them that way they might just cut them that way so probably somebody at the warehouse said i'm tired of these doodads everywhere and said all right let's make them on a hook we'll set them up that way put them over there so uh, as i discussed before i'm gonna have a purge and things that I'm going to get rid of, um, you know, I bought or I got, I collected. Uh, why do I still have it? I'm breaking it all down to a lot of just Star Wars things and some stuff that me meaningful to me. The, the two Picard figures I'll probably keep because I'm a big Patrick Stewart fan. Um, they're really not worth anything, the Playmate figures. That was also in the 90s boom where everybody thought that kind of thing was going to be everywhere. So... The manufacturers met the demand and kept making more figures. So there's random figures here and there that are worth something, but not really. Here's a Hasbro uh, bag that I probably got at Toy Fair. That was probably part of their swag bag of stuff. That's nice. Not that we need any more plastic bags. This is my, uh, this is my, <laughs> this is a Stuart Hughes sweater that I use for packing. Um, I believe I wore this in junior high so that's kind of neat <laughs> that somehow is in there um another sequel for us here is 390 of 5,000 of the donald duck shadow troopers these were celebration five exclusives you could also buy these at the park this was bought at disney world uh it was 11.95 uh 
That's cool. I have two of those. One is my wife's, I believe. What's up, Dave? Was looking for you. Um, so, I have a bunch of TV guides. This is 2001. Alex Ross cover of Superman. Uh, Star Trek Nemesis on the cover. Um, here's Anakin and Obi-Wan, and they change. These are cool covers. Uh, Spider-Man, again, done by Alex Ross. Um, R2-D2. So, if somebody likes TV guides, I should probably contact my buddy Charles, who deals with, uh, paper collectibles, and see if he wants those TV guides. They're in good shape. Um, here's one in not-so-great shape. Oh, the Phantom Menace. Now, these are a bunch of... These are a bunch of, uh, like, you built, like, pieces like these. So these would be cool to actually mount and put in frames. So what did they get me here for? They got me for $1.50 for each cover. And then here's Boss Nass. He had his own cover. I think if I flatten those, they'll probably be in okay shape. They're not really uh, mildewy or anything. So here's uh, Deep Space Nine. Didn't expect to see TV guides, did you? Voyager. ho oh ho so I went to a lot of Star Trek conventions in my day. I actually got Armin Zimmerman to sign his, or is it Shimmerman? Shimmerman. Uh, to sign his uh, TV guide that he was on the cover of. I wonder where I, I, I knew I had Quark, the action figure, I had that signed. I, 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 I think I sold it. But having him sign his TV guide, that's pretty cool. Um, here's another Star Trek Next Generation for the last episode. Here's Avery Brooks in Deep Space Nine. Here's William Shatner on that trek. Um, wow, I have a lot of TV guides. Here's one with Patrick Stewart again. Here it's Kirk versus Picard, the debate. So these are nice. I kept these in comic book covers. Good shape, actually. Those are nice. Buck fifty a piece. Um, all right, so here we go. First boxed item, and it's not in the box. So that means somewhere this vehicle figure. Vehicle and figure are floating out. Um, $11.99. This was one of the Ralph McQuarrie Expanded Universe. This was their first Hasbro foyer. For, foyer? Is that the right? That's not the right word. It's their first Has, Hasbro's first attempt at releasing um, McQuarrie designed vehicles that were not necessarily in the movie, but inspired by the movie. This is the speeder bike. They released a cloud car and a snow and a snow speeder. I know I have the snow speeder. So. This is just the box, and that's in this massive thing. This is just the box. What's awesome, Dave? I'm sorry, the, the Star Trek uh, stuff? Probably. I know you're a big Trekkie, or at least your wife is. Um, so here is, never been out of the box, $3, a Cadu with Jar Jar Binks. Um, this was bought at Walmart on sale for 3 bucks. So being that it's a Jar Jar toy... I probably never would have bought it because it was a Jar Jar toy, but because I probably wanted the creature. $3. Episode 1. Probably in the box. It has been opened. So I did open it at one point. Maybe I just took out the creature. Who knows? Or the tape just broke. I mean, a lot of boxed items here. Um, more magazines. Weird. Okay. So, yep. More covers. This is the first dinged cover we have. Jar Jar Binks, we got Jabba the Hutt, we've got uh, Watto, and then more of the covers. These are the other sides of that big Phantom Menace artwork. That'd be a cool poster. Um, so these are all the different covers. And that's a buck fifty for the same issue, right? Number three of four of our collector series. These are all May through June. Yeah, May and June, when Star Wars ruled the world in 1999. So Walmart bag, vintage Walmart bag now. Wow, just keep reaching down. The sign TV guide, yeah. I went to a lot of Star Trek conventions um, when they used to be at this convention center nearby. Oh, nice, okay. So here is, now I showed you guys the speeder bike the other day. And I honestly don't know where the heck it went. It probably went in a tub. But here is the speeder bike. Now, I did work at Walmart uh, for approximately two years at two different locations. I actually opened a Walmart, which is an, a, a crazy experience. Um, building a store from the ground up in a warehouse and then whew, amazing. 
Um, I got certified to fire some sort of weird nail gun that most people don't <coughs> don't use. But here is the flash speeder. Now we know the official name. And as you can see, I don't have I didn't have the cannon, and it looks like I may have been missing these silver pieces that were up front. But this was five dollars at Walmart. So how can I walk away from it? You're right. It, how can I not get this? So it's nice to have one in the box and have a loose one. Um all right, so now that's how crazy I was. This is double bag. This is, oh, these are neat. These are the Power of the Force Complete Galaxies. So what they did was they released, I believe, three of these. And, I mean, look at all, Hasbro really went all out. We got the uh, product description, uh, uh, what it is description about the Death Star on the bottom in one language. We have this globe. And what it is is this shows you on the side. It's the Death Star, but it's also Vader's thro little throne that was inside the uh, Star Destroyer. So it looks like the globe, but you open it up, and it actually is a double play set. Very cool. The helmet goes on Vader's head. Um, obviously never been out of the box. In fantastic shape. Um, and I think I have Yoda. But they made Yoda on Dagobah in his little house, and then they made an Ewok. And I think the Ewok actually came with a creature inside Endor. So... Yeah, don't want to lose that. And definitely have to rebox that and bag it. So as I said, most of this box, this was stuff from 99. So, oh, here we go. So here is, never opened, this is Jabba's Palace in 3D. So I had mentioned earlier in a couple episodes, I had the cardboard, I can barely reach it, um, cardboard 3D cantina set. Well, then they also released Jabba's Palace as a cardboard 3D cantina set. So it would be great to have this and then use the new vintage collection pieces around it. So it does have a little cardboard throne for Jabba. But the cool part was it actually came with Han in carbonite that he was actually molded out of the, like he could fall forward. He came with chains and everything. So this was to promote episode one. So they did a lot of things. Um, they compared episode one uh, to the original trilogy, and then they would have, here they have the Jabba's pod race, and they have Jabba here. Um, the Jabba the Hut here was one of the worst Jabba huts that they ever released. It was terrible. Um, even the Jabba that spit up stuff was better than this. And there's another Jabba that spits things at a target. So much better than this Jabba. It was ugh, terrible. I'm sure he's in this box somewhere. Um, but this is 25 inches long, so it's about that long great uh cardboard uh play set to set up uh sadly i've never taken it out of the box so this was twenty dollars at kb toy store hopefully i have another one i'd love to open that and maybe i will i'm getting to this point where i'd really like to enjoy this stuff stop buying new stuff and enjoy what i have i think that's probably what i'm getting to at this point in my life okay so this is <laughs> this is a giant pez dispenser of the emperor there is Pez in there. He plays authentic Star Wars music. And a buddy of mine gave me this uh, around 2008, 2009 as a gift. Um, so definitely kind of cool that the Emperor is back. Um, probably something I would put in my office now is a weird... I have some weird things that people are... They, they, they spark a conversation. So this is a giant Pez dispenser. And the box is crushed. So I probably should just open it. Not eat the Pez. Oh, God. Not eat the Pez. Hey, what's up, Rob? You know, Rob, you got a lot of great uh, cooking going on on your Facebook page. And uh, I'm very jealous that um, of what goes on there. And I would like to be invited one day when we are actually able to socialize once again. Um, all right. So, now the reason why I have these bags the way they are is, in my mind, everything would be damaged or flooded. So I had to create a bag that would not have holes in it, not create, but use the bag that would not have holes in it, and then use that bag as the base so that if things did get wet or mildewy, the water would get would, would, would catch it. It would be protected from it. So this was opened at one point, as you can see, and this is the T-16 Skyhopper. Now this is from 1996. And this is Luke's uh, little ship, or the, the thing that he talks about, uh, you know, blasting Womp Rats with. This was the ship. You can actually fly the ship in several video games of that era. Um, it does come with, this is neat, it comes with a file card. 
to give you every information about the vehicle itself. Uh, you can see it briefly in episode four. It's kind of parked in the background when uh, C-3PO's getting his oil bath. But it's also neat because it has Shadows of the Empire vehicles and figures that are out at the same time as this. So when Hasbro was really cranking out some of the stuff that we always wanted as kids and as collectors, and then finally having the opportunity to pick it up. I am running out of space. All right. Um, let's get this big, big bad boy out of the way. Now, this is... I don't know the right way. This is the Electronic Power FX X-Wing. So this is a slightly larger X-Wing than normal. Um, this isn't the Degabo one. There is a Degabo one, and I really thought this was it. So this is... I don't even... Phew, God. Sadly, there are batteries that probably try me and made effects, and I never took them out. So definitely, it has uh, 12 real movie sounds. This thing is life-size to the figure. So it's a, Luke is going to be the right proportion to this X-Wing, so it's going to be slightly bigger. Um, I don't remember what I paid for this, but it was definitely in the higher price point range. I'm talking like 50, 60 bucks. So it has never been opened. The glue is still sealed. It's a little dinged, but you know what? Take this to a toy dealer. It's gold in their eyes because it's never been opened. And even R2 doesn't come out, but he, he lights up. So and I don't think Luke comes out of his seat either because Luke is all, everything is to, is to scale and then is to move. So this is, this is a nice find. I'm glad I still have it. Um, the Poe Dameron X-Wing that's out now, I don't know if that's to scale. I, well, I mean, I don't know if it's the scale of that, but that's at $100. Um, really like to get one of those myself. But they also re-release Luke's, and I'd be interested in comparing those two. I'd rather get something I didn't have, because I'm really sure that somewhere in all this stuff, I have the giant Dagobah X-Wing. So, here's another boxed item here. More boxed. Oh, we got a couple more boxed items. Um, so this is bagged. This is sealed. I'm gonna have to put all this back in. You know, I thought about bringing my knife down, and I was like, "Yeah, what do I need it for?" Man. So this is. Ooh. It was opened at one point, but this is the original. Uh, well, I can't say original. This is the 1995 um, Kenner Tie Fighter. Now, this isn't to scale. It's it's to scale of the of the figure that the pilot can sit in it, but it's not scale to what it would be in the movie. Um, so it's slightly smaller. Um, I do have the vintage collection one, which just has enormous wings. Um, it'd probably be closer to that X wing. Really big ship. Um, however, I think it was funny that they were re releasing. These figures back in 1995, Power of the Force, and they they still put a stormtrooper on it. Like they, why even bother if you knew you were going to eventually make an Imperial Tie Fighter? And they did, like within the year. But to rush everything into production, they had to show you that a stormtrooper would sit inside of it. So at that point, there was the X-wing, uh, the uh, Millennium Falcon, and the Sand Speeder, and the Tie Fighter, and then eventually they made Vader's Tie Fighter as well. So love to see this bad boy out of the box again. Um, but I'm at that point where I'm, I'm living in the home that I am now, but I know that we're going to be moving within a year or so. So you're kind of like, do I want to open these things up now and set them up for display? Uh, or do I just want to uh, have them prepped and ready to go for when we move into the house, which I consider probably going to be the final house. Like I'm going to be there as my son grows up. That's going to be our home. Um, so here we go, another bag. Okay, so this is a good one. So, there were numerous Star Wars characters from the Kenner line uh, that were made. There were many characters that were not made that yet had influential moments in the film. So, here is Dr. Aver uh, Abazan, who is in Rogue One briefly, does a cameo. Here he is with Walrus Man. Now, they make Walrus Man, but they never make the Doctor. And there's a long thing that, like, for years... Uh, Lucasfilm wouldn't release characters uh, to pay actors the rights to that didn't have a, a mass character they could do, but if it was a human face, they wouldn't do it. So that, it's a long kind of, uh, did, was that true? Did it really happen? I don't know. 
that's the rumor that I've heard, the, the legend. But this was one of the first uh, three packs that um, that Kenner and Hasbro had put out. Um, and they, they did this with Stormtroopers and Luke. Uh, well, Stormtrooper uh, disguise set. Um, really cool cardboard display, a backdrop. You get a base. Um, a neat figures. Um, and they eventually they did release more screen accurate versions of all three. So this would be something that I would keep in the box. Like I wouldn't open this up because I have... Though it looks like I may have at one point. Um, I would definitely keep this in the box. As in... I have a better Walrus Man. I have a better Dr. Evasian. Ev 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 I have a better version of him. And then I also have a much better... Several better Obi-Wans. But regardless... A very fun collection piece for me. Love that thing. Um, I'm trying not to get... I have two figure boxes in here. So this is the last... Okay, here we go. This is the... Ooh! This is the last box vehicle in the set. And we're going to open this one. It is in there. Okay. The pilot... All right, so this is the original, not the original. This is the 1995 A-Wing. Um, I had to have this when, I, when it came out because I never had an A-Wing when I grew up. They released the A-Wing, but they only put it out, um, I believe, with droids. It was a droids. That was the cartoon series that came after Return of the Jedi. And they made him and the pilot only came out then. Um, he is here in the package. You can see the wings. And I did rewrap him of sorts. And he is definitely, he is right there. Look at this vehicle. I mean, this is fabulous. It must shoot a rocket or something. There's some sort of, nope. This is the landing gear that comes down. This is, when you're a kid, and even now as an adult, I look at this, and this is Star Wars to me. This is the adventure, the fun, um, your own ship, go wherever you want have your own adventures fabulous decals painting i probably put stickers on it i did put stickers on it um there's some sort of battery pack here so I, there's something here under the bottom i'm not 100 percent sure what that is so let me see if there's any kind of electronic effects on this um it launches tripod landing gear nothing that says i need batteries so i wonder what this could just be the housing of the gear right here. I'm not really sure what that is. That's there. And then there's this little thing that pops up here. I'm not sure what this does. So I have to look at the instructions, which are here in the box, by the way. But, I mean, that's just... He's right there. That's, that's it. That's Star Wars right there. That's so much fun. Um... Hours, hours of adventure, um, you know, and the nice thing about when they made these vehicles and ships was that you could put anybody, well, mostly, anybody in these boxes so that you actually could do the adventure that you wanted to do, um, tell the story that you wanted to tell, and that was the fun part about Star Wars. Um, again, file card, and this was out at the same time as the, the X-Wing, uh, released very similar at the same time. Vader's ship, Imperial Probe Droid, a couple other things. I'm trying to get this back in the box. Box is a little warped, probably because it's been crushed. But again, you go to a toy dealer, uh, you know, you want to get rid of this. You still have your parts, your pieces, your cardboard, your instructions. Everything is still in the box. It's resellable to them, it's, uh, it's enticing. Uh, to someone who comes in and says, yeah, oh my God, you have the A-Wing? He's like, yeah, it's all in there. We got all the parts. Um, $24.99 at KB Toy Star. Amazing, right? All right, so we are down to two. One more. This, I think, is another Bamar Monk. Yep, this is a mail-away Bamar Monk. Complete, never been put together. Now, we had a Bamar Monk. Uh, a couple episodes ago, he was in a little glass case. Instruction manual. I would print this on a t-shirt. Like, it's, and some people do. 
Some people make those little designs and they put them on t-shirts. So there's Bramar Monk. That's how he comes mailed to you like this with another cardboard around it. All right, so here we go. We're in the tub. Now we've got, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I'm just running out of space here. And we've got two boxes of items. So, I don't wanna bump the camera either, so. Which may almost be impossible not to do. So as I said, I worked at Walmart uh, for two years. So I was privy to things of this nature. Um, I worked there in 1999 um, when the figures were coming out and the new movie was coming out. And it was I was able to actually grab these boxes that, that boxes that the figures came in uh, from getting crushed. And Walmart doesn't really have like a... Uh, a policy that, that you can't take those things. Target does. Um, the boxes are great because I knew that the figures would fit ever so rightly if you, you know, slide them in this way and stuff. And it also marked it for me um, when these would be packed up. Oh, the Star Wars figures in there. Definitely want to do that. So I don't know why I did this at the time, but I started doing this with comic book boxes and sticking these figures in here. So there's the Walrus Man again. Here's the uh, uh, Guardian, uh, the Imperial Spy. Weak Way. Now, Weak Way is interesting because this figure here has this like uh, like a foil decal sticker, but there's another Weak Way. It's a bit rarer, and he comes with a 35 millimeter slide. I don't know if I have that one. Another figure that was never made before, like the Long Snout, was the Rebel Fleet Trooper. Very muscular, uh, that figure. Who else is in here? So here I got Dengar for $6.99 somewhere. That sticker kind of looks like a Spencer's gift sticker. Kind of. Ah, this one's a little bendy. So this is from, this is an ASP droid. And this is from the special edition of episode four. So he actually appears in the background of all the new footage that they added to Tatooine. Card's a little little bendy. Now, some of these figures, like I said, like the weak way, he may have a variant that's worth something. But the majority of these figures are worthless. Um, to the collector on a card, they're a little bit more, um, but it depends on who it is. Like, there's a million Lukes, a million Hans, but when you get into some of these oddball guys, like, if you really wanted a 4LOM on a card, this is how you're going to get them. Now, the articulation is not the best here. They have made better versions of these figures. So, do I have that figure? Would I rather open that one or rather open this one? And, of course, we have... I know I have this guy open like three times. We have uh, an Admiral Akbar who just got... Uh, finally got announced a Return of the Jedi uh, Black Series figure just yesterday, actually. And we have that on our Instagram. We also have it on our uh, website. So... That's one box. And it should fit 12 figures, so I don't know, quite know why I did this. Probably because it preserved them just, just a little bit better. Um, and duct tape, is, as I've learned, is the worst, is the worst tape uh, to try to pack things. It, it just does not survive the heat. So I'll probably use these boxes again and repack a lot of the power of the force figures. So let's do box two. Again, let's get rid of the duct tape. Ugh. 25 year old duct tape. Oh, so here I did do it. So here, here I did pack them as they were in the box. Now, when I went to college, it was one of the, one of the Walmarts I worked at. There were two at either end of town and it, they were filled with toys. And it was always, I want to do this. It's always great. This whole, this may be the whole wave of these figures. So as I had mentioned earlier, we did um, they were relating figures to episode one. So it was a classic character, uh, and then there was some tie to the new movie. So he was going to have either a relation, a figure, uh, or a species that was similar to him. So big thing, it was coming 1999. This is Chewbacca on Hoth, and then you would pull this down, and then there's Chewie, and then you would say there was going to be a Wookiee senator. So there's one. Here's the Emperor with Lightning. You pull it down, you get Palpatine from episode one. 
here we have C-3PO from Tatooine with a removable arm, and then you pull it down, and you see him in Episode One. This is a, this is this is a cool way, but this was clever to fill the market this way. So here we had uh, Vader, and then we have young Anakin. No, I'll never take these out of the pack. Just the way they are, and a lot of these figures. So this is the uh, R two D two that launches the lightsaber for Return of the Jedi, and then you know they put R two D two inside the Nabu Starfighter, which is right up there. So here's this is a cool Luke. <laughs> um, that was on a purpose. Um, so here we had Luke, and then we had Anakin. So we actually had two Anakin uh, mentions in the flashback photo. But this is a cool, I call this the the Wormy. That was his nickname that was cut out of the deleted scenes where he actually has the sailor's hat to cover his the back of his head and his ears for shade. Here we have uh, Ceremonial Leia with uh, Chewie's, you could say that's Chewie's uh, medal. And then we had it flashed to Padme. Again, a slightly better Obi-Wan. And then we had the Ewan McGregor, so you could switch between Alec Ennis and Ewan McGregor. Um, this is the most glaring one. So this is as in, like, we're going to go from one Yoda to the next. So we go from original Frank Oz, uh, Empire Strikes Back Yoda, to the Yoda that was sort of a puppet and sort of CGI. It's just depending on... He, he was a puppet in the, in the original Episode 1, and they changed him to look like it did in subsequent releases. It's just such a nightmare. Um, and then... This guy's just stuck in here, and this is an awesome one. So, this is a um, when the Comtech chips were out with everybody, and I love the Comtech chips as stands, not so much as Comtech chips. Um, here we actually had a, um, a stormtrooper came with a rifle rack, awesome, and then you actually got him in warm water, and then he would have a blaster, a blaster attack uh, thing. They didn't do too many of those kind of figures. You think they would? But recently, they've done it with Marvel Legends and they've done it with Star Wars Black Series figures where if you get the figure in extreme temperatures, these other little things pop out. And it's awesome that Hasbro has gone back and done that. And ironically enough, like uh, Zartan from G.I. Joe was one of the first figures that was, hev that was done with that. You get him hot or cold and he would change colors. So here's my thing about trying to get these back in the box. The, uh, the figures don't... You have to really almost like play a game of chess. <laughs> Excuse me. Play a game of chess to try to get them all to be in, in the box the right way without crushing each other. So I would probably spend the next 10 to 15 minutes to get them all back in the box the way that they came shipped. And that Stormtrooper is definitely outside of the norm. I've got four more figures here. Yet you saw it when I opened it. They were all in this box. So... Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so quick wrap up. Um, surprises. Um, it was great to see the 3D uh, cardboard Jabba's Palace again. Forgot I had this. This was awesome. Uh, seeing all the TV guides was definitely an awesome treat. Um, forgot I had those as well. Seeing this this blaster damage uh, stormtrooper. Fabulous reminder that Hasbro did do that little get them hot or cold, add a little water kind of thing to them, and they actually did do stuff. As much as this, I mean, you saw this was in a box. It's still kind of starting to fade on the yellow. It's starting to get a little yeesh. Um, but I think the best thing in the whole box um, is the A-Wing, to have this back in my hands. I have one of the new ones upstairs in my office, and uh, it's still in the box. I paid $5 for it. And I think I'm actually going to review it. And I can actually compare the two now. Um, I love when I can do the comparisons. To see the mold. Did they change it at all? What they do is it, it's a whole different thing. Um, so that's that's this is going to get put to good use. So again, thank you for tuning in. This is Bob uh, from Total Toy Recon. Um, we're posting uh, a lot of my finds on Instagram. So I'll do some close-ups of a couple. And uh, we are shared a lot of Star Wars news yesterday on Instagram and on our Facebook page and our website. Um, it was just one of those days where they announced a whole bunch of figures. Um, they had a fan appreciation day. Um, I don't remember hearing anything about that. So I'm guessing that because of what's going on with the virus right now, um, a lot of these things that were going to get announced uh, down the road, I think they just announced them now. And they're also taking pre-orders for a lot of those figures now. So... Um, that's going to help out a lot of the uh, the fan uh, retail sites like Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, 
those guys because they're going to be able to take pre-orders on that. So it's a good thing to do. And if you can order them through your local comic book shop, please do that. Um, I know that a lot, a lot of the local comic book shops uh, do special orders um, through their fan sites. They have wholesale accounts. Um, one of my favorites is New Wave Comics, which is in Skipback, PA. And um, if you can help out New Wave, pre-order your books, pay for your books ahead of time, it'd be a great thing that you could do. Um, so again, Bob from Total Toy Recon, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll do another coffin. Um, it's tough getting to the coffins, and then I have to rearrange this room. Um, so I got to wait till my son takes the next nap so I can come down here and quick fix everything. Um, but a lot of great finds, and thank you for tuning in, and be safe out there.